courage, bravery, and determination. Yes, today we take on the house that is bold, daring, and brave of heart. So put on your lion hats, because today we are doing a look for Gryffindor. Hi, today is December 17th, and in case you didn't already know, my name is Lisa. Today we are doing part three of four of my Get Ready With Me series featuring the Harry Potter ColourPop collection. That was really hard to say. It's like a tongue twister. But if you'd like to see parts one and two where I take on Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw, I will link the links to those videos in the description box down below. And what exactly are we getting ready for here? Once again, we are getting ready to film my next video and why not make a video out of that? Seriously, that's, that's pretty much what it is. And I was going to film three videos today, but I'm pretty sure I have a fever. And this video will also likely be a fever dream when I'm done. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna be pretty honest with you. I, I feel like complete and total garbage right now. You may remember in the vlogs I did last week about how I was just getting over laryngitis. And well, now I have something completely different and so much worse. Like I, I literally have blisters in the back of my throat and it's, it's so painful. But you know what? The show must go on, and that's what a Gryffindor would do, right? They trudge forward, throw their body in harm's way for the ones they love, and fight through the pain. So today we are embracing the Gryffindor spirit and making this damn video. And then like five more after this one tomorrow. But before we get started, check out my earrings. They're super cute. They got little snitches on them, or look at that with the little gold ball and silver wings. And we wearing these ones because, you know, Harry Potter, he's in Gryffindor house, and he's the, the Seeker on the Quidditch team that catches the snip. So I just thought it was suiting. So, you know, it's one of those things. So yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna do the eyeshadow first. And as we know, this is the pressed eyeshadow palette and pressed powder. No, that's, that's the word. <laughs> and it's really pretty and we're gonna open it up. And to be honest, I actually already dabbled a little bit in the Gryffindor colors for the video I made yesterday, just cause I, I needed something. So like I got Taylor Swift tickets, spoiler. I mean, you probably saw the video. And um, I decided to wear my red cardigan. Um, you know, it's the cardigan for the Taylor's version red album. And I wanted to match the red stars on it, so I used some of the red colors that were here, just because like it was the one that I had out at the time. Um, but let's take a look at the colors here. And so for this look, we are definitely going to be using these red colors here, we got this like pumpkin juice color. That's like this orangey color, orangey red. This kind of, this one called Gryffindor, it's more of like a crimson red. Um, Butter beers is a really nice um, orangey sparkle color. And then we have golden snitch. So definitely gonna be digging into these four colors primarily. Um, what I did find though was adding a little bit of this floating candles color that we use for Hufflepuff. Also looked really good with this because I, I gotta really like the look I did in the Taylor Swift video. So I'm kind of going to do a little bit of that one again, just a little bit more deeper red, but I really loved the gold and this pumpkin juice color on the outside of my eyes. So we're going to work with that a little bit. Okay. So first one I'm going to do is I need a nice neutral base and I'm going to, since it's a red is pretty dark, I don't want my skin color to show through as much. So I'm going to start with the base, this whomping willow color right there, put that on the bottom. So as mentioned, everybody thinks that I am a either a Hufflepuff or a Ravenclaw. And I've said before, I'm not going to tell you what I am. You have to guess. You have to put it in the comments below. Maybe one day I'll reveal it. Probably not in this video series, but I kind of want to see. I kind of want to see what you, you have to say. And um, I can't really give you any hints. I think you have to kind of pick up on cues from my other videos and from my descriptions and stuff and like, what do I say about myself? What do I call myself? Because I think I kind of have elements of all houses like most people. But which one do I value the most? Because that's what these houses are about, right? They're about values. Because we all know there were a lot of cowards in Gryffindor, but yet the house is known for bravery. You know, there's a lot of idiots in Ravenclaw, yet the house is known for wit. And there's a lot of jerks in Hufflepuff, despite Hufflepuff being like the nice house. And then, I don't really know, I think Slytherin is the one you're gonna find like the truest characters. And you're like, I know there's that one part in Harry Potter where Dumbledore's like, I know sometimes I think we start the students too soon. I'm like, yeah, you know, Snape's still a Slytherin man. He is. He's just not the, 
just because someone's brave doesn't mean that they're not also cunning and ambitious. You know, you can have all those elements. So, you know, but you know, I think, I think JK Rowling didn't put much depth into her creation of Slytherin. I think she just kind of was like, Slytherin bad, end of story. And this guy, once he redeemed himself, he's not really Slytherin. Yeah, whatever. I gotta say, I got a lot of friends who are Slytherins and they're all awesome people and they all have really strong morals. So this idea, I mean, well, it's just the book series, I know that. <laughs> but this idea that that kind of personality is like done and bad and then once you get out of it, you're not that, it's, it's, it's dumb. I think I got enough of this on. I'm gonna move on to the next color. The next color I'm gonna use is this pumpkin juice color right here. It's like this nice orangey red. I'm not gonna delve into the Gryffindor just yet. I feel like it's gonna be really good for lining my eyes. Um, not really lining, but getting like the creases. So I'm gonna start with the pumpkin juice just to get red there. So a lot of people take the book series and their Hogwarts houses are like really, really seriously. And as you can tell, I'm one of those people. And it's really dumb, I know it is. It's just fun. Um, but I think part of the reason why we do that is that Western culture in America and millennials in particular are kind of really obsessed with categorization and finding nice, neat boxes for things. Uh, whereas I feel like Gen Z has now more leaned into, I don't want to be in a box, but they still give themselves labels. It's really interesting. It's like trying to break out of the system, but still being a part of the system. Whereas I feel like, you know, millennials kind of really embrace the system and then the system stab them in the back <laughs> you know it's one of those things um but we really like boxes and we like to know who we are and it's really hard to define yourself in your own words and in your own terms and so we kind of like these pre-made labels for us that's why millennials who find are very into astrology they're very into um, personality types like Myers-Briggs and Enneagrams and Harry Potter houses. They're all essentially the same thing. They all have different elements of each other. And yeah, there's not that much like, at, okay, not much. Let's, let's be honest. There's like no science behind 99% of that stuff, but it's fun. It's, it's, it's like a metaphorical and artistic way of describing something you can't describe. And that's why millennials are kind of really into it. Um, so if I say, geez, that person acts so much like a Gryffindor. It means they're fiery. It means that they're brave. It means that they're kind of brash. It means they have the negative qualities of a Gryffindor too, that they're, um, that they, they rush into things without thinking about them. They sometimes forget to be considerate of others, that they take up other people's time. Like, like, yeah, this is my opinion on Gryffindors. Let's get into that a little bit. So like 80% of Gryffindors that I meet, like people who would classify themselves as Gryffindors, they're generally really, really fun people, but they can also be like inconsiderate a-holes, especially towards like just other people and their own friends in general. Like it's not even just strange on the street, like towards their own friends, they will be incredibly inconsiderate because they have that go with the flow, especially go with my flow kind of mentality. They're the ones who like struggle to show up on time and then call you rude for holding them accountable for, for making you wait. Or saying, oh, don't worry about that, we'll be fine. And then you are, and it wasn't fine. And you, you miss out on something or you, you end up spending more money than you were supposed to because they gave you the wrong information and they don't have the decency to apologize for it. I just really don't appreciate the way that Gryffindors like play with your time and security and then just expect you to be okay with it. Like they'll go even further. They'll, like they'll like outright make you the villain for it as well. Like let's take a look at it, what happens in the book, right? Snape is like the ongoing villain in the first few books. He's t made out to be a total jerk, but Harry's kind of like, he's just a rule breaker. And he's like, well, I should be allowed to break the rules because I'm trying to solve the mysteries of what's going on at Hogwarts. And yeah, Harry does say the, end, the day at the end of the day. But he could have just as easily died. Like, let's be honest here. And meanwhile, Snape's is doing his job. He's like, yo, you're not supposed to be out at night. Yo, you're not supposed to be in the hallways. You know, like, this kid is just, like, getting away with everything because he's Dumbledore's favorite. Like, Snape has a valid point here. Um, and then meanwhile, Snape is made out to be the bad guy. All along, all along, Quill is the bad guy. Surprise! 
Ugh, it's annoying. Okay, so I'm done with the pumpkin juice. I really love this color. I mean, this, so here's the thing, when you have blue eyes, just like with Hufflepuff, the yellow contrasts the blue eyes really well, as does red and orange red. It's just always gonna show up well. The problem with red though, like true red, is it can give the illusion of having like, it makes you, it kind of makes you look like you're, you're, you're unwell, you know? It makes you look sick a little bit. So you really have to be like careful with how you use the red. But if you use it well, you can bring out the blue in your eyes. Unlike using the blue eyeshadow in Ravenclaw, that was, that was horrific. And I have high hopes about the green. I think the green's gonna be just fine, but mm, my goodness, that blue was terrible. This one, this one's good. So um, next one I'm gonna use is Butterbeer. It's kind of a lighter orange right here. And I'm gonna use that on the outside right here. So now we're gonna go on the topic of Gryffindor bitches. And as discussed, Hufflepuff are Southern bitches. Ravenclaw are condescending, intelligent bitches. Um, and then Slytherin is always going to insult you in a way that's gonna cut you right to your heart. And most of the time it'll be the truth, masked and bitchiness, but sometimes it can be, sometimes it can be a lie to kind of like gaslight you, but you know, in all gaslighting, there's like a tiny, like a 1% of truth. And that's what draws you in to be like, am I actually the problem? And so then it's like, yes, you are the problem, it's you. But the average Gryffindor, in my opinion, is the absolute worst. And I'm not saying all Gryffindors do this. I'm just saying a lot of unself-aware, unevolved, immature Gryffindors. So the kind you would see like in middle school and high school, you know, not, not the, necessarily the adults unless they didn't age up, you know, unless they, they failed. And a lot of millennials did fail at growing up. Um, unfortunately, I think they're getting a lot better at it, but you know, our childhood was basically delayed by financial crisis after financial crisis and traumatizing world events. Um, but they're, they're very brash and open about being bitchy to you. Uh, you know, they'll be the ones who aren't decent enough to be bitchy to you in private. They'll be bitchy to you in public and they will call you out to your face in front of other people. At least well, that's been my experience. And they'll also think that they're kind of personally justified in doing so. And you know what the kicker is here? Half the time, there was no reason for them to be bitchy to you in the first place. It was a mistake, it was a misunderstanding. But if you even point it out with logic and reasoning and receipts and pictures or whatever, they're already in too deep. They're not gonna admit it, they're gonna double down. And once again, you're gonna, it's, it's the perpetual victim. So it's like a, it's very much a narcissistic, that's what it is, narcissistic bitchiness. And the reason why they cannot admit they're wrong is because they've already put themselves in a position to embarrass you, and now they're the ones who are gonna be embarrassed. And somebody with a decent amount of self-evolved humility can admit to this and be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And, and most people will be like, oh, that's embarrassing, but at least they admit they're sorry. They, they, they admire that humbleness, but, that narcissistic bitchiness kind of, they can't see that part of it. They can't see that outside of, they just see the part where they're wrong. Ugh, it's so frustrating. I mean, Harry Potter astrology, man. It's, it's the it works. <laughs> just so you know, just cause I talk shit about a house doesn't mean I'm not part of that house. You know, I've talked shit about all the houses so far. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I've met a lot of Gryffindors I've met a lot of Slytherins. You know, pretty much 25% of the people you're gonna meet are gonna be one of those four categories. And there are some good qualities about Gryffindors, you know? Um, if you get like any typical Gryffindor, it's gonna be the one who stands up for you, right? They're gonna be the ones where they see something wrong and they're gonna try and fix it. Sometimes they can be a little social justice -y about it. You know, they're like, it's a, that be a little cringe where it's like, I didn't ask you to stand up for me. And also you don't know what you're talking about. So your defense of me is kind of offensive, <laughs> but the point is they care and they try. Um, I think, I think the narcissistic Gryffindor then would end up being like, sit down and shut up and I'm going to defend you. You don't even know what's best for you. You know, <laughs> um, a lot of people like to fancy themselves the hero, even when they're not the hero. Um, next I am going to. Let's see. I want to get started on a little bit of the gold. And I'm going to, so I'm going to go right into this golden snitch color right here. And I'm going to kind of buff out the orangey reds 
with this one. So it's gonna get that going. I love this gold color. Okay, so I think I got enough gold on here. Just going to, ooh, it's so pretty. Oh, I love it. I'm gonna be so goldy by the time this is over. Goldy, 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 goldy. And then I'm going to go back to the this pumpkin juice right here and put a little bit over the gold just to have a kind of a more of a red tone gold going on. Just dab it on like that. And I'll definitely have to clean up a little bit because like I said, like like red, like blue, it smudges a little bit. It's not as bad as blue. Blue is really hard to cover up, but I can go back and define the edges of the eyeshadow a little better later. Um, now I'm gonna go with the floating candle here, and I'm gonna put that a little bit over it as well, just kind of like dampen the red down. Yeah, just put it right over the lid so it's not so prominent. The red still shows up, it's just it's so strong. I kind of want a little bit over it, but I don't want to completely cover it with the, um, the golden snitch. That's why I'm using floating candle, it's just a little bit of a lighter gold. So it still comes through, it's just not as, you know, strong. Okay, so now I'm gonna use my flat edge brush to go with the Gryffindor color. This would be way too strong to put this like all over the lid. Um, that's why I'm just gonna use it sparingly, but I really do like the color. It's, it's really pretty, like this one right here, the middle red color. It just is way too strong, especially for my skin tone. I'm just gonna put it at the creases of my eye, make sure it gets in there. I might buff it out too. It just won't be as strong. Creases. So if you were to talk about like famous Gryffindors, who would that be? I think it would be a very annoying person. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, they can all be really, all the houses would be annoying. Um, but I think it would be someone who's, let's see who would be a Gryffindor? Like Winston Churchill, <laughs> something like that. I don't want to say any American presidents because I just feel like, well, I mean, they're all narcissists. So probably not they're all, you know, they're all either like, there is no president who is a Ravenclaw or Hufflepuff. They're all going to be Gryffindors and Slytherins, just, just face it because they all want attention and they're all ambitious. So it's gotta be one or the other. Let's get a little bit on the outside. I don't want that much there because I'm gonna go with the liner, but I'm just gonna put more in the crease. Okay, I got that there. Just gonna buff it out a little bit more, make sure it's not just like sitting there. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the butter beer and just get a little bit of this on top of the gold, again, right here. Okay. Oh, it looks so good, okay. So for lining my eyes, the kind of, before I put use the red liner, I wanna use a darker liner. I think I'm gonna use Sorting Hat right here. It's like this dark gray color. And I think it's gonna go better with the red than Elder Wand, because it's like, Sorting Hat's kind of like a warm gray, if that makes any sense, and Elder Wand looks like a cool gray. So I feel like Elder Wand will go better with the greens, but Sorting Hat will go better with the reds. Okay, just gonna get through here, line my eyes. And I'm historically terrible with eyeliner. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I typically do use, use a brush to kind of put some eyeshadow as a liner down. Um, but I have been getting a little bit better and I find that the eyeliners that come in this set are fantastic. They don't, they don't smudge. They really like you put it down, it keeps its shape and it dries very quickly. And I'm like really impressed. So I might like end up buying more eyeliners from ColourPop if they're the same quality as this because all the other eyeliners in the world have failed me. Maybe people like it where it's a little bit more, um, glidable and control, like to the point where it, it yeah, it's more smudgy but you can glide and shape things better, but that doesn't work for me. I'm not that coordinated.
And like, I think it needs to be said again, I'm not an expert at makeup at all. Complete and total amateur. This is not a makeup channel. This is, I'm having fun channel. I like to talk about some things that are a little bit pop culture, but you know, I'm not gonna make a separate channel for that. Maybe one day I'll make a reaction channel. I'll talk about that later, but this is just my vlog and fun channel. And I feel like the reason why I do this will be explained in the next vlog I do. And it's all about part of self-care and progress is having fun. And it's the ability to, you know, feel cute, go out in the world and achieve things. Because if you're, if you, Feel good about yourself. It's just it's just easier to do things. That's enough lining. My goodness. Yeah, I love the look of the eyes. Now I'm going to kind of take the um, the Harry Potter red liner, and this one is called Sword, like the Sword of Gryffindor. There, and then I'm going to open it up, and you can see like the full unboxing in my Hufflepuff video, but. That's what that one looks like. They all like that. And this one's a really beautiful red color. I put it on my hand. Oh, just a little bit more. Right there, you can see it. It's really nice. I kind of wish there was more of it. I'm kind of afraid to run out because I love it so much. Let's see here. My neighbors upstairs are so loud. It's so annoying. Next year, I'm going to move into a condo. Um, there's going to be no one above me, no one below me. It's basically a house. Um, and so I'm really excited to just, like, have a yard and quiet for once. I'll have a spare bedroom um, so I can make, like, a, a more professional studio. Because, like, right now, um, I'm filming, like, behind my couch, you know. It's just a little area behind my couch in a one-bedroom apartment. Um, but it'd be nice just to have like a studio where I can have better sound control, um, better lighting control, and I can like soundproof the room, make sure that just the sound is, is better, you know? Because this room I'm in is kind of, kind of large, so the sound's not as good as I would like it to be. Okay, so I feel like my eyes are done. Um, I'm going to, of course, define them a little bit after I finish putting my foundation on. Um, but now I think it's time to add some mascara. I use the um, CoverGirl Lash Blush Volume because it's hypoallergenic and my eyes are already tearing up because anything I put next to my eyes ends up making my eyes water. And so I have to be very careful about what mascara I use. Okay, so that's the first coat of mascara. I'll add the rest later. Now I'm gonna finish putting my foundation on and I use the L'Oreal True Match Mineral Foundation. And right now this one's Warm 2. I wish they had Warm five, uh, 2.5, um, but they only make that in the liquid makeup as far as I can tell, but I really wish they could make it in the middle foundation as well because my skin tone's kind of between 2 and a 3. And I'm also a very pale person who happens to have a warm skin tone, so that means I have yellow undertones. I'm actually a neutral. It's just that the more sun that I get, the more yellow it gets. Um, it kind of it leans that way, but it doesn't mean I can't wear cool tone and neutral colors as well. It just means I'm always going to be suited best in warm tone colors. Okay, just gonna blend all that in. It's so hard putting makeup on with your hair down, but I wanted to wear my hair down for this video because I feel like having like the long hair, it fits the more lion mane kind of theme, but geez, it's, like, it's getting everywhere. It's annoying. Um, so now I'm gonna take this other brush and I'm just gonna clean up around my eyes a little bit. Just make sure it's not too overwhelming. I do this kind of make sure there's like a barrier as well between my uh, my eyeshadow and my eyebrow because I don't look like it's bleeding into my eyebrow. That would be weird. Okay, next I'm gonna do some blush and I have 
the same blush I've been using for a while, and it's the Georgette Super Shock uh, Cheek Satin right here. Beautiful color. Matches everything I do, so that's why I love it. For the highlight, I'm going to use the Buck Beak. You know, he's a hippogriff. And um, I'm going to use it because... Here's, here's the container. But I'm going to use it because it has kind of a rosy color to it. It's like a rosy toned one. You can see there. So I feel like it's going to fit the red tones much better. Let's see. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is my lips, um, just to finish it all off. And I'm going to be using the, um, the Gryffindor Courage Chapstick, and then the Harry Potter Lipstick. And they're calling it like a, a liquid, luxe velvet liquid lipstick. And this one's it's actually a really deep red. I'll let you take a look at it. It's like a, it's like a rosy red, but I think it's going to fit. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of orange color in it. And the chapsticks are scented and delicious, so they taste good too. Here you are. And because I'm sick, I don't want to like spread the virus to these, so I'm just going to put it on my finger. My hands are clean. Put it on my finger and then apply it and then do the same with the other one. Smell it first. Oh, it's, it smells good. It smells either cherry or strawberry. Kind of hard to tell. Let's see. finger the top I don't really know but it tastes good I think it's leaning more cherry now for the lipstick Ooh, it's so pretty it's very like blood red here when I pull it out oh it's so dark it's so dark I don't know how this is gonna look It's very hard to put this on cleanly when you're using your fingers, <laughs> but it's for the best. It's gonna clean it up a little bit. It's totally smudged. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Um, the red is like way deeper than I would usually wear, but I think because I have the sweater on, it works. You know, if I was wearing a, like a different, like lighter color, it wouldn't work at all. But because of the eyes, the sweater, everything together, it's fine. Um, so I'm gonna show you the final look. Look into the camera. The whole thing, you know how it works. I'm just gonna take a few poses. You know, it's interesting because I got a little bit on my teeth. <laughs> I was just like, ah, you can see it. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Pretty sure it's fine. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.